Hi everyone, welcome to Gist with SA. It's such a pleasure to have you guys back. I've missed you all so, so much. I hope you've been keeping safe. I hope you've been good. Today promises to be another exciting episode with Gist, on Gist with SA today. Trust me. If you're joining us on Facebook, don't forget to share this broadcast. And remember, you can always call us to talk to, to the guests directly on the number plus 447466951641. Today, our guest is the motivational speaker of all motivational speakers. His name is Ubon King. He's a business consultant, a security expert, a motivational speaker, and he's the president of the Ubon King Foundation, a non-profit, non-governmental organization targeted at training young people like myself towards leadership. So today we're going to be learning a lot about leadership and motivation in times of despair. You will all agree with me that with everything that's been going on recently in the world, around the world, especially in Nigeria, a lot of people need to keep motivated you know so they don't lose focus so our guest today is going to be telling us how, how we can remain motivated in times of despair hello mr king it's good to have you on gist with sa hello boss how are you i'm good <laughs> yes yeah, so are we ready to get people motivated well, I'm, I'm I'm ready to to respond to you, but be sure that they will get motivated. That I guarantee them. Oh, I'm sure. I, I I'm I'm very sure of that as well. I'm I'm a living proof that you're very good at what you do. Yes. So, um, before we get started into motivation and all that, can you give us a brief about your humble beginnings? Okay, first of all, let me thank you for the opportunity to be on your platform. I don't take it for granted. My name is Ubon King. I was born in 1972, August 22nd to be precise. I came out premature eight months. My mom till today still calls me the size of a dusting powder bottle. And uh, nobody thought I would survive, you know, because um, I was very, very tiny. Uh, I think I have such kind of bullish response and uh, to life. So I refuse to, you know, keep quiet. Now, that helped me to, you know, to actually push myself. And I went to federal government, I mean, Maryland Government Private School in, in, in Lagos, then Federal Government College in in Lagos. When I was in my GSS2, I lost my father, who died at the age of 39, and I was 13. My father was my friend, uh, so when I lost him, that relationship went, and I was not very close to my mom. So my mom used to beat the living daylight out of me. She used to heckle me and all that. So mom and I were not very good friends. Now that affected a bit in my academics because whenever I see a young man and a father holding each other, I feel very bad. You know, I feel very tortured, very, very disturbed. So that became my my kryptonite. And, um, but it affected my education. Um, I couldn't read effectively. I was always down. So I came out of um, Ijaniki Federal Government College with a P in English. For some reason, I did GCE three times, and I still had a P in English. But anything that had to do with mathematics, I'm good. I got admitted into University of um, Benin in 1989. In my first year, I was dropped because I didn't have English. In 90, I was dropped because I didn't have English. In 1991, I was admitted into UNICAL to study agri-economics. But because of the same English, they brought me down to agri-education. My mom got to hear that I was in agri education and said I wanted to become a teacher. So with that, she disowned me. So I was what? disowned at the age of 19. I was dis dis um, disowned at the age of 19 and um, had to sort out myself. My mom is the head of the cabal in the family, so nobody wanted to get on her own other side. Now, wow. that alone you know, pushed me in such a way whereby I decided to take a job as an assistant, office assistant, in a fashion shop called uh, four impressions are only K wire, and for me, I started life there, and that alone really, really helped me a lot. So I'll stay there for three months, and on the fourth month, I'll go back to school. Now, so okay. because I'll stay three months, and on the fourth month, go back to school, it affected my grades, it affected my doing a test and assignment. 
So I ended up coming out of University of Calabar with a third class extra year, and, and, and I didn't go for NYSC. I started my life taking care of people's uh, pigs in um, a place called Econ and Ebong. If I get 1,000, I'm good to go. Then I ended up squatting in a friend's house. And, you know, if I needed to eat, if they don't go to their mother's house to eat, I cannot eat. So I had to learn to survive. I didn't look like this. I, I just did. I just wanted to contribute to the society. I was not a useless person. So what did I do? Security was my passion. Why was security my passion? Because my father was not, did not pass, did not pass on normally. There was a reason why I lost him. Somebody did something to him that I lost my father. So from there, I took a passion that any body that will lose his father or so i'm ready to defend so security became my passion so that was where i now found my passion in security and i said to myself i'll be the best security officer i can be and mm -hmm. i was in a church in uyo akwaibo state for three years i worked in that church for three years without salary you know so i was always living from hand to mouth from hand to mouth until i saw a magazine called security and safety and that magazine, I went to, I wanted the back editions. So I found out that they were in Lagos and I came all the way to Lagos using night bus. All, all through the night, I was standing in the bus and I got there and I got 10 editions and I read those, the, that magazine. I read the magazine in such a way that I was eating it. I read it, I read and read and read it until I left red. I ate that magazine. Whatever you eat and you continually eat will eventually eat you up. Security mm. ate me up. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be able to have the best solution. Then I began to see that you could wear uniform as a security officer. You could actually do things about CCTV. So from there, I wanted to know more. My level of, inquis um, of um, inquisitiveness increased so the deeper i was i didn't know i was just going deeper and deeper and deeper it was just sucking me and i was happy that it took me deeper luckily for me i found the girl of my dreams who decided to marry me who decided to tolerate me who decided to correct the rubbish out of my life the day i proposed to my wife i was just wearing boxer shorts you know i asked her if she'll marry me i honestly i didn't think she would say yes but she said yes and you know when a woman comes to your life she corrects the nonsense out of your life so then I had to learn to do it myself. I needed to organize myself. And when I m decided to marry my wife, interesting to note, everybody in my family did not want to follow me. There were only eight people from my village that came there. In short, when I was driving to the village there, you know, normally they have young people that block the road to come. They didn't recognize me because I didn't look like someone that had anything. So they allowed me pass. And everybody <laughs> looked down on me. And I, and I tell people that, you see, it is not where you are born that matters. It's where you mm. end that matters. So mm. I don't care where you are. I don't care what has happened to you. I don't care your situation. I don't care where, where, how, what people call you now. If you can just look up, you will get up. So that's a brief about me. And I, I run a company. I've done security for over 24 years. But four years ago, I decided to stand down and start talking to young people to get them better so in quotes i'm not exactly a motivational speaker i am an experiential speaker let me first okay. correct that okay yeah. all right sir thank you so much for that from what you've said i've got a lot of questions but just coming in now is the breaking news that joe biden has been elected the he is the uh president elect of the united yeah. states how do you feel about that sir First of all, I'm not an American, and uh, I congratulate uh, everybody in the United States of America for completing the process. I am I'm anxious to see what will happen in the next one month because already the tension in the country is quite heated. So I want to see if there will be a lot of altercation going on and tr Trump has threatened to you know go to court. But however. I want to believe that um, the USA will follow the process and will continue it. And congratulations to Joe Biden. I'm looking forward to shaking his hand. <laughs> that's my that's my pleasure. He has four years. God will make me and I'll shake that man's hand. Then we'll be able to talk man to man. <laughs> wow, okay. That would be great. That would be really mm. great. So how did you end the, na your, the nickname Troublemaker? Mm. Okay. I, I think um, when I decided to start talking to to young people, I, I began to see a trend in my life. And that trend was 
the only way that if I needed to sort something, I needed to be in the middle of it. Until you are in the middle of it, you cannot sort it out. And every time I was sorting something out, I was always like a fixer, a fix it. Uh, look, King, there's a problem here. Go and fix it. How you do it? Nobody is interested. They just want okay. it done. So I became a fixer. So I now said to myself that the only way to get out of trouble is the, the only way to come out of trouble is to first enter the trouble. How do you sort problem without first entering? Okay. So I, be, I became skillful at sorting problems. I became skillful at, you know, finding a way out. And somebody has told me, which I read some time ago, he says that it is not the strength of the water that breaks the rock. It is the persistence of the water that breaks it. Mm. So your strength is irrelevant. It's just stay consistent. Once it hits that rock, it will crack one piece at a time, and at the end, it will break up. So um, I read a scripture that says in Psalm 46, verse 1, that the Lord is a present help in time of trouble. So if you want to see God, enter trouble first. So me, I love doing the Lord's work. <laughs> oh, I like that. If you want to see God, enter trouble first. Okay. Bam. Let's start Bam. looking for trouble now. <laughs> okay, so what inspired you to leave security? You didn't leave security. You're still very much in security. But what inspired you to go into this line of business, motivating people, you know, well, I, I, didn't start it, I, I didn't start it as a line of business. It, that's not what it is. Uh, okay. Because my business is still can take care of me comfortably. However, I now notice that if I win alone and my neighbor does not win, then I am the biggest failure in life. And I know that the challenges everybody has is the same thing lack of intelligence, lack of intelligent information. And if people don't have the right information at the right time for the right challenge, they will fail. So what did I do? I now came out and I started speaking to young people and I set up maybe like, I want to have like a hangout with Ubon King and maybe like 30 people will come, fine, we'll do a meeting for three hours. Then it started going from hangout with Ubon King. It grew from 30 to 50 50 to 100, 100 to 200. Then I started going from one state to the other. Then I got into the universities. I started going from one university in Nigeria to the other. There are different setups and co. So it grew from there to the point whereby it grew to 1,000, it grew to 2,000, grew to 4,000, you know. And from there, I now saw that, look, one thing helped. The more they can hear, the more. So, are you there with me? Yes, sir. So that for me became 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 my mantra. So I now know something that if I'm going to win tomorrow or leave a a legacy for my children, I need to start helping people. I'm a mm. young man of 48 years old. My son is 14 years old. Now, if I if I help young people now become better, if my son is looking for an opportunity and they find out it's my son, won't they help him? Yes, they will true. help him. Yes. So I have this law that says if you are looking for results in three months, go and plant corn. If you are looking for results in one year, go and plant yam. But if you are looking for a result that will last you a lifetime, plant men. So I started teaching men. And the more they mm -hmm. practice, they started seeing the results. They started seeing the results. It became better. So a lot of times I do things for free and no problem. But I found out that free does not help. People who pay, pay attention. So when you have people who are serious, yes. So when they pay, their, money, their, their mind is, I have paid for a service. So yeah. they will pay attention. But when you give people a lot of things for free, you know, they will not value it. But once it has cost them something, they will not pay. So there are some people that say, King, I would like to pay for that service. I said, okay, no problem. So we had to put a structure to it so that those who want to pay, fine. Those who want to do it for free will give you the one that is free stuff. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. All right, then. So in your years as a mentor or a life coach, what is the thing that you have discovered 
is responsible for little or lack of motivation in people, especially young people? Okay, I, I think for me is uh, I'll, I'll I'll put it like this one is intelligence. Mm -hmm. Now, the difference between a poor man and a rich man is intelligence, not mm -hmm. intelligent. Being intelligent is for you to say one plus one is equal to two. That's being intelligent. Mm -hmm. You are smart, but intelligence is for you to be able to gather this information and apply it here and get the results that you should get. That is intelligence. Okay. Now, a lot of Nigerians, a lot of us, let me use Nigerians, are very, very intelligent, but they don't think. Mm. They don't think, they don't think. They don't apply themselves to what they have learned. They, have lo they are looking for, for jobs. They are looking for jobs. I don't have a problem with that, but I need you to think more. If you can think enough, what you have is more than enough. So a lot of them, when they go to school, their brain cells die. If they don't get the job in a bank, don't get the job in an oil company, they're not going for anywhere else. So they're waiting for hand-me-downs, pass-me-downs, until okay. they get to a breaking point whereby their brains are no more working effectively. And this not only affects young people, even people that are old. Because I tell people <coughs> that if you can take food for your body, you need to take food for your brain. It is mm. called armoring your mind. You need to armor your mind to be able to face the challenges that are outside there. And it is important because you don't know what is waiting for you tomorrow. You don't know what's waiting for you in one week time. But if you prepare yourself when that challenge comes, because you are ready for it, you will deal with the situation. The difference between a bulletproof vehicle and a regular car is the ammo. So if you eat 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon, 20 minutes at night, you might as well study 20 minutes in the morning, study 20 minutes in the afternoon, and study 20 minutes at night. If you do that, nobody, you will not be shaken by by any challenges that come. And listen to me, whether you like it or not, challenges will come every single time. You cannot stop the challenges for, from coming at you, but you can stop the effect it will have on you when it comes. Wow. Great. So how do you get um, the youth involved in nation building? What's the best strategy with everything that's going on in Nigeria right now? I think for me, for me, I, I, I what I believe is everybody should develop themselves at least one hour a day. One hour a day. And in, if you heard recently in Nigeria, there are two boys, Shola and the guys, the guys in charge of Paystack. They opened a business five years ago, five years ago, five years ago, five years ago. And then they sold that business. Yeah. yeah. They sold that business just a few days ago for $200 million. These boys are under 30 years old, under 35 years old. If two boys could think of an idea and sell it, what we need to do is we begin to think about it. We need to start doing. I believe that the, 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 the generation just above this junior ones, the, above this youth, really did not look at that space because I tell people that there are children that were born during the war, children that were born just after the war, of course. So they had because they now became the fathers and the mothers of of the younger generation who are 30 and below. Now, so they have this self-preservative mentality, this self-save-me -save mentality. That's the mentality they have. But it became destructive because they left the whole system about. I, I look. So now, we, we need to help our younger ones. We need to start telling them, look, apart from ABCD, begin to learn what is happening in the world. There was somebody sneezed in China in November last year. The economy of Nigeria shut down. So stop thinking about Nigeria alone. Find out what is happening in China. Find out what is happening in America. Find out what is happening. Because whatever happens there will affect you here. So if there is something that can give you progress, it will always give you progress. The internet is, is around. The, 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 um, the space, what they call this thing again. The internet is around. Digital currency is around. You need to start studying digital currency. Start studying because banks are losing it now. Banks are shutting down because digital currencies have come out. So it, we cannot stop change from happening, but we should prepare them for tomorrow. And that's what the mindset we should have.
Now, if you look in Nigeria, the best and the biggest real estate companies are young, are owned by young people. So if they have a target and they put a time to themselves, so they can become. So every young person can become whatever he wants to be if he's ready to put his mind to it. Wow. Wow, great one. So in light of the recent um, events in Nigeria, first, first, uh, first of all, what did you think of the NSAS protests? Well, when it comes to the NSAS protests, I, I think that um, there are a lot of um, things that have gone wrong over time, over time. So it has just, it has just become a big balloon that burst. So first of all, the youth that came out and everybody, you know, they had a very good cause you know, to try and protest it. And they were able to make noise. And they did everything that was ethical. Unfortunately, something just went wrong. Mm -hmm. And then people took advantage of it. And it has not, instead of it being something of value, it has become something that has destroyed a lot of people's businesses. Yes, if you notice, during the period of NSAS, you will record that there was no incident, no robbery no challenge anywhere. Now, so that tells you that, you see, that idea was a laudable idea. However, you know, it created gaps for people to take advantage of it. And those gaps were seen in the system whereby when um, the night of the incident, major incident happened, people were, people's cars, houses, factories, offices were vandalized. And it began to expose all the nakedness and all the decadence that has happened in the system over years. So it was it, it, it was an eye-opener. But more importantly, everybody in office, everybody that has a political office, everybody that has a responsibility has woken up. Because you know that, look, everything, anything can happen at any time. So now... There is that inclusive mindset that has come on a lot of people that you don't eat alone. You don't, you, when you ever are doing anything, think of everybody and take that decision in favor of everybody. You are not a celebrated. Anybody can come down anytime. So that's basically what I, I saw uh, that answers, honestly. And it was, a, it was a big one. You're very right, sir. So um, unfortunately, <laughs> it didn't end the way a lot of people thought that it would end and it has left a lot of the young people especially those who were actually you know at the forefront frustrated they are frustrated some have given up you know how would you advise them to stay motivated because a lot of people are saying oh okay what you can do now is wait till 2023 you know your vote is what's going to matter, is what's going to speak for you, and all of that. How do you actually keep people motivated? Because there are people who are not even interested in voting at all, as it is right now, because of, you know, how things ended up, the protests. So my well, question well, is, what I, would I you say, for me... Yeah, my question is, what would you say to the youth, those that were, you know, part of the protest and are feeling frustrated with how everything were, um, ended? Okay, I think first of all is to thank them for being courageous enough to speak out loud. I, I want to thank every young man and woman who was able to speak out and, you know, do something ethical and positive because there were no secrets. There, were, there are a lot of reported stories about what has happened that led to the NSAS, you know, issue. Um, because some people that have the opportunity as, um, as security agents, you know, abused the power that has been entrusted into them. Now, after... Okay, Are you there with me? Okay, we're here. We're yes, here. sir. Okay. So the next thing now is, like I said, you need to armor your mind. Mm -hmm. Armor your mind whereby... Every
this is when this is when you need to stay motivated, personally motivated, one hour a day. One hour a day. Please bear with us. The network is acting up a bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's going to pick up in a minute. I see you guys. Thank you for joining. Emeka Henry Eka Thompson, Godwin Isong. I can see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, we have to hold on till the network gets back on. Oh dear. King, he's trying to get back on. Okay. We're back, sir. Can you hear me? Sorry about that. Yes, okay. Sorry. So you need to armor your mind one hour a day. If you don't eat food for 30 days, if you don't eat food for 30 days, it will affect you. True. You could become weak and even die. Now, so if you don't eat for your mind for 30 days, your mind sleeps, your mind dies. And listen to me, the boat will still sail. So you need to get up. You need to take life as if you're a soldier. Go back into the trenches and begin to do your daily exercise to your mind. Begin to study one hour a day. Begin to like, what is your plan for the next five years? What is your plan for the next 10 years? A lot of us under overestimate what we can accomplish in one year, but underestimate what we can accomplish in five years. So stop thinking the short term. Yes, your, 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 your shop is false. Yes, your businesses are down. Yes, your money is lost. That is temporary. We should start thinking long term. Long term is where we should look at. When you look long term, you'll be able to get that drive that pushes you a step further. And that is what you need. I don't care where you are, but if you are listening to this tape, I beg of you, you need to armor your mind one day, one year, one, 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 one hour every day. If you do that for one year, you will nobody will recognize you again. Wow. Wow. Okay, before we go ahead, please, um, viewers, you can send in your questions, uh, put in your questions in the comment section and um, so that Dr. Kim can uh, um, answer them. And then you can also call us on plus 4474669516641. I just called you Dr. King. <laughs> mm. People call me so many things, though, and I appreciate it. Anything you call me, I'll answer you. <laughs> Any plans of um, becoming a doctor in the future? I'm already Going a doctor. Out. You're already a doctor. I'm right. Well, I don't see that in your yes. title. I don't see it in your I don't title. need it. I, I don't need... I don't... I don't... I, I prefer you just calling me Obon King. Okay. I'm first Obon King before any, any other say. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. That's so happening. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to ask my next questions while we wait for viewers to send in their questions as well. In one of your sessions on YouTube, you mentioned that um, economical life is tied to your social life. Can you please shed light on that for the benefit of those looking to start a business in the current situation in Nigeria? In any situation, okay. anyway, not just Nigeria now, because, um, yeah, there are people who have also relocated and are trying to find their feet. Okay. Um, let's do it like this. Um, growing up, our parents told us, do not talk to strangers. True. 
So anybody you will see you are afraid that they will, so because of that what is this? so you don't talk to strangers now so with that people avoid that stranger but what you did not know you were feeding yourself with the wrong things mm. successful people begin to teach their children how to socialize from the age of four so because a ebay child socializes from the age of four his neighbor will tell him come and eat in my house so that child already has access to opportunities right from the age of four. But when you are told, don't go there, don't eat here, don't do this, don't do that, you now stop. You believe that you are meant to stay. So there are people who are intelligent, but yet they are at home because they have told them, don't go to, don't talk to strangers. Oh. And because of that, they lose opportunities. Now, when they grow older, they don't grow past it. You only relate. That person that is holding your money that person that is holding your car is a stranger. So when you look at a stranger, somebody holding your money, your smile to that person will change. The person you are married to was first a stranger to you until you built a relationship. The teacher that teaches you in school, the first day you go to school was a stranger. But after time, that person became your teacher. You created a relationship. The person that sits beside you in class is first a stranger, but after a while, he becomes your classmate. So if you are looking for money, if you are looking for network, build the network, connect the dots, learn to penetrate that stranger because that person beside you is holding your 300,000 pounds. If you know that that person is your access to 300,000 pounds, your smile will be different. Your relationship with him will be different. The way you say good morning will change because you know that yeah. you need to connect the dots. So that's why your social relationship will always affect your economic economical relationship. Talent is always overrated. You may be talented, but the person that knows how to connect will always make more. Wow. Okay, we're waiting for your questions. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, this is really eye-opening. So can you... Um, Tell us some practical steps to take in attaining a desirable future for ourselves. Uh, you said that um, you you know build yourself one hour every day, study. But apart from that, what else can you do? In you know, okay, trying to for me, uh, being practical, I always ask people, um, where where do you want to be in five years? That's the kind yeah. of question I'll ask you. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, um, I don't know your age, but one thing I'll ask you, in five years, at the top of your mind, you will tell me, King, I want to buy a house, uh, maybe in, uh, maybe in, um, in, um, where, choose a place. In the UK. Yes, where in the UK? Um, South East London. South East London, very good. So now, you want to buy a house by what year? 2025? Let's look at that. Immediately you say that. The next thing that happens is that you will ask yourself, how much is the house? Now, why I'm saying that is that the minute you put a target and you put a time, everything changes. If you are going to succeed tomorrow, you need a time and a target. A time and a target is the greatest thing that everybody needs we have not been taught about targets we have not been taught about time the, if you tell me that king i'm coming up at 5 p.m um, uk time 6 p.m nigerian time we have put a time we have put a target everything will stand still for that time but if there's no time if there's no target is wish wash so a lot of people i wish i could buy a car stop saying i wish decide i want to buy a car in one year once you say that, direction appears. You will look for the car. You look for, okay, how much do I need? You look for what strategies? Because no direction will come until you have a target and put a time. Okay, so let me take one question from our viewers. Don Frank says, good evening, Sir King. Please, I want to know how um, someone can control his mind to think right in the world where there are so many voices. 
you select the one you want to hear now. <laughs> like now, I don't I don't like to hear news. I don't like to hear anything that is negative. I don't I don't need it. I don't need it. I choose to listen to what I want. I choose mm -hmm. to, you know, listen to the kind of thing because I have a target. I said I have to read one hour every day. Sister, hey, hey, I focus on that thing. I even use my calendar. My calendar tells me the time that King, by 6 p.m., you need to read for one hour. So by 5 o'clock, the alarm is on. It's reminding me. So whenever I hear that alarm, it's telling me, King, get your jotter, get your barrel, get your document, and start reading. So I have an alarm that tells me when to exercise. I have an alarm that tells me when to walk. I control where I will be today because I need to be somewhere in, in the next three years. So that's what you do. Your mind is not to control you. You are to control your mind. If you can't control your mind, that's a problem. Mm. Okay, so from this guy's question now, I'm thinking, maybe he's not really thinking about the negative voices. There are situations where, you know, you have um, different people telling you different things. There are people who are it's slow to finding their purpose. Okay, so... No, no, no. Forget about slow to finding purpose. I've not even spoken about purpose. I'm okay. saying, what do you want out of life? Take a journal, check a journal, take a barrel. What do you want? You want to be rich, you want to have a good job, or you want to have a good business. Write those things, those three things down. That is paramount. That okay. is paramount. Once you write it, how do I get a job? How do I get a business? How do I then then follow your follow your target? Once you follow it, you get the results you are looking for. Without that, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. So being okay. practical is you decide what you want. Let me tell you, when everybody was born, you cried for yourself. Nobody cried for you. True. Sure. Yes. So if you are going to win, you win for yourself. Please stop depending on another man to give you direction. No, 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 no. You... Okay. Be your own direction. Be your own uh, signage. I want to go here. You will make mistakes along the way. But now they told you if you miss the exam, you have failed. But in life, if you miss, if you miss the exam, you have passed. Why? Because the house where Mr. Success lives is on Failure Avenue. You are permitted to fail. You are authorized to fail. Failure teaches you a lesson. It does not kill you. So you made a mistake. No, you learned a lesson. Stop saying you failed. Say you learned a lesson. Once you see life like that, my brother, failure will become interesting. I failed to success. I kept working in failure till I succeeded. I know the experiences. That's why I say I'm not a motivational speaker. I am an experiential yeah. speaker. I know how it will work. I know what you do. If I talk to somebody for an hour, I can tell the person where he is and where the person will be. It's very, very critical. Because I've been there. I've done it. I've seen it. I've felt it. I've done the result. I know where you'll be. So those experiences are the best thing that happens to me. Okay, so we have a call. Hello. Hello. Um, can you hear me right? Yeah, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from, please? My name is Fatima and I'm calling from Scotland. Okay, Fatima calling from Scotland. Nice to have you on Just With Essie. What Thank question you. do you have for our guest? Sir, I would like to know um, what, if, what do you think about the... Um, what the if the government could have done something better in the NSAS protest, I could have done differently in the NSAS protest. Okay, did you get that, Sam? Okay, yes, I think I, I got what Fatima said. Fatima said, is there anything that the government could have done better? Yes, okay, good. So Fatima, first of all, thank you for reaching out and uh, for, for putting on this call, for asking your question. There are always many ways the government would have done things better. I think the first thing was to have a listening ear and then, you know, listen to whatever protest the protesters were saying and then take notes and, you know, 
help them because the problem, the, the, the responsibility of every government is to care for its people. Is to care for its people. When you don't, and one of the things that we, we also need to understand in Africa, we've always had that, the, the, that mindset that the older people are wiser than the younger people. So yeah. a lot of times they don't see. So tradition has affected a lot of judgment. And then if, the, if, if they are spoken to the younger people and then heard their cry and I were able to take corrective actions, I don't think what happened would have gotten, would have escalated to that level. More yeah. so, it is something we have been carrying for long. It is not something that happened in one day. It only blew up like that in one day. It has been coming from far. Okay, so Fatima, does that answer your question? The government should have yes, listened. Sir. Okay, thank okay, you so much. Thanks, for Fatima. Thank you for having me. Yeah, bye. Okay, so that brings me to something that actually always, you know, bothers my mind. There are so many people who go into government with good intentions. But when they get there, I don't know what happens. It's like the system changes them or they just become, you know, par drunk or I don't know, maybe the money just takes over or something. How can young people who are going to go into government or even starting your own business, how can you maintain integrity in the mm. face of temptation? Mm. One of the things I tell people is that the biggest, the only currency that you have in any field, whether it's business or in government or in whatever, is integrity. Integrity is doing what you say and saying what you do. It is defending your name, defending your family's name at whatever cost. One of the things that happen is that you see, everybody shouts, I want to go into politics. You go into politics with the mindset of a catapult. But when you enter into the field, you now find out that, listen, you need a big hammer to deal with the situation. So you go there unprepared. So the environment and the, 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 the support system they, 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 they choke you to failure. So you now are failure about to happen because you were not prepared. So for young people, begin to be prepared. Prepare your mind. Prepare your mind, even in your business. I tell people that that chair you are sitting on, I say now, you did not pray before sitting on that chair because you trusted that chair. But if a truck were to go on that chair, you will pray. Because you will ask yourself, can this chair carry it? You can never grow bigger than your structure. If you don't have a structure and you enter a position of power, then there's a problem. I tell everybody that you begin to exercise yourself now in leadership from, level, from a junior level until you will get opportunity. Opportunity will always be there. Once, once you're there, if you're not prepared for the opportunity, you become an embarrassment to that office. Wow. <laughs> so they should start being prepared now. Start asking yourself, if they give you a hundred thousand naira, how do you account for it? You don't account ninety eight point ninety nine ninety nine thousand naira out of a hundred thousand naira. With that one thousand naira, you're a thief. You have to account for it. You must learn the basic of accounting, of responsibility, of management, of, of community relation. You must learn. We are not there to worship you. You are there to serve. So if you think that you will now become a, a, a leader in all, so whether it's whether it's a business or so, you 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 and one of the things I tell people is that leadership is for somebody who knows the way, who has been there, who will now come and take people there. So you cannot call yourself a leadership material if you have not started leading people before. What proof do you have? Not to shout that you want to be the counselor or the governor. I hear young people say that they want to be counselor or governor. How ready are you? Are you ready to talk to the mothers in the village? Are you ready to be able to ensure that with the little resource you can put a borehole? Not to buy a brand new car. Not to buy Bagbada and where. That's not leadership. Leadership is accountability. Sure. Yeah. So, so before you step on it, 
Go ahead, Ma. Yeah, so with all that, what do you have to say to the youth um, regarding 2023 elections? A lot of people have been saying that um, um, the youth should register a party, you know, you know, and get involved, actively involved in politics and all of that. We know that, you know, even if they do that, it's not like they're going to take over immediately. You get me? So what are you aware, advice do you have are you for aware us? That in, are you aware that in the current political parties, there are youth that are there already? True. Do you know that the way they work is that from one stage to the other, so they are preparing for their own turn. Are, are, they, are, are you aware? So even if all the youths go and register a party now, eh, and go, if they are not prepared for the responsibility ahead, they will do the same thing that is happening now. Now. True. Yes. If they don't, if they if they're not accountable, if they're not responsible, nothing differentiated. And I tell people, yeah, it is not what you say that matters, it's what you do. Hmm. You see, everybody can manage poverty, but the true character of a man comes when power, when money enters his hand. Okay, we have another question. Yeah. I think we'll take this as the last question before we round up. Um, it's from Don Frank again. He says, Sir King, please, in a situation where you are the only one working in a family of six, your salary is like 50K, and as a first son, others look up to you. How would you make it in life with all these challenges? Is it compulsory to help them and remain broke in life? Okay, Don Frank, thank you for this question. Let me tell you something, Don Frank, if you die today, your family will still continue. Let me help you. Let me motivate you very well. <laughs> if you die today, your family sure. will still continue. Yes. Now, if you enter an aeroplane, they tell you something, and that's the safety brief they give to you. They tell you that if the oxygen pressure of the plane goes down, that oxygen mass will come out. You are supposed to cover yourself first before you help any other. You save mm -hmm. yourself. Everybody that is 20 years old and above, they should go and get something doing for themselves. You feed them till they become a beast. You feed them until they will eat on you. You need to tell them and make them become accountable and responsible for themselves. I don't care who that person is. Let that person go and work. There are young boys and young girls who are working in KFC. They are 16 and 17 years old. Why doing this to yourself? You need to, and the law of success is this, is that whatever salary or money you make, 50% is investment money. 30% is, is for you to live on. 20% is if you want to give anybody. If you don't give anybody that 20%, now use that, 20, that extra 20% for yourself. So 50 investment and then 50 for yourself. So you have what they call a compounding life. So when you keep 50 and then you're able to make profit of, 20 that means you have 70 so when you add the next 50 i mean the next okay let's say you are making fifty thousand. you save 25 uh, for investment and then you keep 25 when the next 25 come you add it to that 25 when the next 25 you add it to that 25 when the next 25 you add it to that 25 and you are not keeping that money in a piggy bank you are investing the money not savings account it is not for saving it's for investment you must have a compounding law for your money if your money is not compounding you will be poor you will be broke so what i'm telling you is that if you don't know about compounding go and learn about compounding the money you have what do you do with twenty five thousand naira what do you do with fifty thousand naira what do you do with a hundred thousand naira go and learn the law of compounding your money and it will work for you wow thank you so much dr king Inong Ibula says, okay, 50% for invest investments, not savings. Yes. No. So you just keep investing, no matter how small. Yes, yeah, just keep investing. Keep investing. Keep investing. Because you want to grow. If you are saving that money, that money is going to be used by the bank. Why don't you invest it? And get return on investment twenty five thousand naira. Maybe your profit is five thousand. You have thirty thousand naira. 
By the time you put the next 25,000, you now have 55,000 Naira. It will give you another maybe like 10,000 Naira. You have 65,000 Naira. You are progressing. It is when the money gets with you, you cannot say, okay, let me use this and create multiple streams of income. Because if one stream should go down, that 50K salary you are getting should die. What next? Sure. In, okay. Inonge, how are you from um, Zambia? How are you? Zambia. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> so much wisdom. I have so many questions bouncing around in my head, but unfortunately, time will not permit us to take all of the questions. Yeah, so... Um, wish you... Okay, so... Um, Don Frank says he wishes he has your direct contact. Yes, yeah, so you can join any of his Facebook pages. He's going to give us his Facebook page. We're having another call. Let me just take this call quickly. Hello? 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 Yeah, good evening. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Uh, my name is Thomas and I'm, calling, and I'm calling from England. Oh, Thomas from England. Thanks for joining us on Gist with SA. So what's your question? Uh, so based on what you just said about investing your salary, what is the difference between investments and savings? Okay, um, savings is just keeping money aside, keeping money aside. Investing is making the money work for you. That's what investment is. That's the simple law or that simple difference. Savings, you can keep the money aside. Maybe the bank tells you that they will give you or don't give you. And you know, if you keep the money in a bank, uh, savings, the bank is using your money. Or the bank is um, doing what... The, the, maybe... Okay. Come again? He said there's interest on the savings. Interest on what? If the interest, okay. you see that interest, they tell you, they tell you per annum, maybe 5% per annum. Please divide 5% into 12. That is 0 0.06. 0 0.06. So now, but you can invest that same money and get 10% every month if you invest it properly. If you find out what they do, and you can do it like uh, you can invest it properly. You make the money out of it. So you are the one to identify the investment. You cannot delegate that responsibility of me, of, of, of thinking the investment for you. I will not do that. Rather, I will tell you to go and learn for yourself. What, how do you multiply the money you have? How do you do that? And it, it, it's important you do that. It's important you learn so that you can actually get the results you want. And it's good to learn with small money because when the big money comes, what do you do with it when it comes? Okay, thank you very much for calling on the show. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, you've been so, so inspirational on this show. It's been a pleasure to have you, honestly. Before you leave us, please tell us how you unwind. What do you do for fun? How I unwind? What do I do for fun? First of all, um, I'm a music lover, one. Number two, I, um, I, I watch films and I love comedy. In short, my, my kind of films are animation, cartoons. Those are what I enjoy. I love cartoons. I love animation. Then, um, well, those are basically it. I have a very tight schedule, but anytime I have the opportunity of uh, catching some fun, I do. I do. Because all work and no play makes Jack a very dull boy. Oh boy. And I can't carry last. Now, Nigeria, I beat now. <laughs> we don't show, we don't show. Yes, thank you so much, so much, sir, for coming on this with SA. It was such a pleasure to have you. Looking forward to more having more time with you. Before you go, can you tell us where to find you for the people who are asking for your personal contact? Instagram at Ubon King. Facebook, Real Ubon King. Twitter, at Ubon King. LinkedIn, at Ubon King. 
everything at Ubon King <laughs> except my 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 page on is on Facebook is at is real Ubon King because I've exceeded the normal one. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you so very much, sir. It was great to have you on this university. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining in on the show today. Until next time on Just With Essay, remember, stay positive, stay happy, stay mended. Bye.